Hello, welcome to the Wakefield Residence. I'm Susan Wakefield, and I'm a member of the East End United Ministry, and also a participant on the Faith and Worship Committee. I'm very glad you've chosen to join me for this Wednesday's reflection. This house and all the other houses in the area stand on the traditional lands of the Mississauga, Anishinaabek, Haudenosaunee, and Huron-Wendat peoples. It's a constant reminder that truth and reconciliation are ongoing and must remain a priority even in these challenging times. I'm going to begin with a quote by Corey Ten Boom, a writer, religious instructor, Holocaust survivor, and a Calvinist Christian in the Dutch Reformed Church. Worrying is carrying tomorrow's load with today's strength. Carrying two days at once. It is moving into tomorrow ahead of time. Worrying doesn't empty today of its sorrow. It empties today of its strength. Let us begin with a prayer. God, help us to park our worries and concerns of this day so that we can focus and be open to the lessons taught by the great teacher, Jesus Christ. Amen. We begin by lighting the candle. And we light this candle because we live in a world of light and dark. And this candle represents the hope that faith in God's love can bring in these challenging times. God created humankind with many gifts, the power of reason, the power of decision, and abundant emotion. God's love is ever-present in the faith and hope that we will use these gifts wisely. Christ was a living example of these gifts used wisely. But even Christ was subject to frustration. Christ spent a great deal of time as a teacher sharing his confidence and faith in God with his disciples. Christ shared his authority with the disciples based on the confidence and faith of God's will. There are times when Christ is disappointed by the disciples, which leads to frustration. Christ expresses his frustration often in the form of a question. You faithless and perverse generation, how much longer must I be with you and bear with you, Luke 9. Or, you of little faith, why are you so afraid, Matthew 8. COVID-19 has created a whole new list of frustrations that many are facing, balancing work and educating children, trying to fill out government forms, technological challenges and the expectation to adapt immediately, much like recording this video. <laughs> Finding new ways to deal with grief and other life-altering events. Just as Jesus acknowledged his frustrations, so must we. <clears throat> Excuse me. We must name them <clears throat> and vent them so that we can call on the gifts God gave us to move forward. Naming and venting frustration needn't be personally directed. When done, you can actually feel re-energized and ready to refocus. There are some coping tools to deal with frustration in a safe and constructive way. But, like many other challenges, tackling frustration 
is at its core a matter of attitude. First of all, is this frustration my fault? Have I allowed myself to fall into this rabbit hole? Secondly, what can I learn from this? Often, frustration can be a part of learning. Seize the opportunity to use the frustration to diagnose and resolve a challenge. Be grateful, not for the bad situation, but for frustration becoming a blessing or an opportunity in disguise. And last, turn the frustration into a funny or humorous event. After all, a cheerful heart is good medicine. Proverbs 17. One of my favorite ways of venting, and for those who know me well, you'll be surprised that it involves no swearing at all, is tiny face and silent scream. All that is required is a lack of inhibition and a willingness to be silly. Now, deep breath and revisit those challenges that you are having. Tackle them using God's gifts of reason and decision. Take heart knowing that God knows our humanity through Jesus and is on our side. We'll close in prayer. God's love is a well of strength to draw on daily. Peace, Salaam, Shalom, from my heart to yours, and God's love to us all. Amen.